and welcome to a fresh edition of Weather for Weather Geeks on this Monday evening. It's the 14th day of March. We had kind of a wintry weekend, of course. I'll tell you, my drive home Friday evening at about 11.30 p.m. was about the worst I've had all winter. Uh, <clears throat> not a plow to be found. Uh, snow was coming down very hard, and there was very little traffic, so I was driving over basically virgin snow for a lot of my trip home. Friday evening. It was real white knuckle stuff. And then we had some snow showers and even a couple of squalls in the area at times Saturday evening that left some additional accumulations in some spots. Then we had our little week disturbance on Sunday that brought us a couple of midday and early afternoon snow showers. That did not add up too much. But since we uh, just got done with a wintry weekend and we don't have any snow, any accumulating snow coming our way anytime real soon, I thought it'd be a good time to pause and take a look at the numbers for the season so far. Through March 14th, 56.4 is where we stand at the Youngstown Ward Airport now. That is a little below the average. Average is about 60 or so. But it's a little ahead of last year through today's date. We had 53.6 through March the 14th last year. We didn't add much to that 53.6 until early May. We had basically no snow in March of last year. A little bit in April, but we had, of course, snow on Mother's Day last May. So you know how it goes around here. We can't say the snow season is completely done until well into spring, although snow in early May is still pretty unusual for us. So we're 4.3 inches behind average for the season, but some of these numbers you know, elsewhere are pretty impressive. Erie PA is 35 inches shy of average. Uh, the lake effect season has not been all that much of a bonanza up there. Cleveland about 6.5 inches shy of average. Mansfield's almost 20 inches shy of average in Columbus, about a dozen degrees short of the average. But we had a lot of snow melt today, as you'll see in this time lapse from Niles. Pay attention to the snow cover. Some of the parking lots and grassy areas disappearing in that strengthening March sun. The sun angle, the strength of the sun, basically equivalent now to the end of September. So even when it's not that warm outside, snow can melt pretty easily. And then you throw on top of it a day like today where we got into the 50s. The snow does not stand a chance. All right, we're into daylight saving time now. You know, I posted this on social a little while ago, and a lot of people agreed. The first few days of daylight saving time are always, it's kind of shocking at about, oh, 5.30, 5.45, 6 o'clock, just how light it still is outside. Uh, you're, you're used to it being either dark or just about to get dark at that time of the day for months and months. And then all of a sudden, it's still pretty bright outside at 6 p.m. And as I'm recording this, it's 7.01 p.m., we still have a decent amount of sunshine, about a half an hour before sunset in Columbiana and throughout the rest of the region. All right, spring is making its advance northward. You know, a few things are are, are budding around here, uh, depending on the, the plant and flower type. But spring essentially is beginning off to our south in places such as D.C., where the cherry blossoms will probably peak next week. Even as nearby as Cincinnati, Marietta, Parkersburg, down towards Huntington, Charleston, places like that. Uh, the, the leaf out, a lot of, a lot of blooming, uh, is really starting to kick in. And a little bit early, all these red colors uh, indicate that a uh, little ahead of schedule uh, in a lot of those locations. I got a few questions on social media earlier. When do we expect that around here? This is something that isn't really predictable. Uh, at least I'm, I'm no plant uh, and vegetation expert. Um, but I can tell you what the weather forecast is. And with a mild week this week, and a pretty mild week next week as well, before a cool down at the end of the month, I would expect, you know, some things to start blossoming and blooming slowly but surely, uh, some buds swelling a little bit, again, depending on the type of plant and flower, in the next couple of weeks, uh, with no harsh cold coming our way in the foreseeable future. Our weather stays quiet tonight. The most active weather in the country tonight is down in Texas. Some hail-producing storms as of this recording around the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. Now, tomorrow is not going to be as nice as today. It'll be a little bit cloudier. We have a weather disturbance crossing the area tomorrow that might produce a spotty rain shower from about midday and into the afternoon. And then uh, Wednesday could start with fog. That's something to watch out for Wednesday morning, but I think Wednesday afternoon is great. Some sunshine. Temperatures returning to the mid-60s. Our model here tries to sneak in a little bit of moisture Wednesday night into Thursday morning. I'm not ready to buy that at this point. I think this will be well off to our south and east, and I think Thursday, St. Patrick's Day, will be one of the nicest days of the year so far. This will be kind of like uh, the day we had last Sunday. If you remember eight days ago, where it got into the 70s, uh, it won't be quite that warm on St. Patrick's Day, it looks like, but already mid-60s by midday. 68 in the afternoon. I know a lot of people who are going to take the day off 
and maybe uh, do a little celebrating outdoors, local bars and restaurants, and it'll be great weather for that Thursday afternoon. All right, so before we go tonight, I wanted to do a quick check-in on the longer range thoughts. And like I mentioned, this week is pretty mild. A little cool interval at the end of the weekend, the start of the weekend. This is Saturday. A little pocket of cooler air. We may stay in the 40s on Saturday, but temperature should rebound pretty nicely by Sunday and into Monday. Now, beyond this, in the longer, longer range, as we head towards the very end of the month, the pattern does start to change, and so some of these cool anomalies start making a, you know, kind of a foothold, or getting a foothold around the Great Lakes in the Midwest. So here's the map uh, for Sunday the 27th. And while this is just one run of one model I'm showing you, this is the European model, there's pretty good agreement on some of our long range modeling that the next 10 days to 12 days, maybe even 14 days will be not that cold at all, but we may have a pretty good chilly stretch compared to the average at the end of March. Now you gotta keep in mind, of course, our averages are rising quickly at this time of the year. So a chilly day at the end of March is not the same as a chilly day at the start of March. A chilly day at the end of March could be a 53 degree day. Uh, that's not the case in early March. We'd you know, kill for 53 degrees at the start of March. So, you know, you got to take these with a little bit of a grain of salt considering the rising averages. But I do think there will be a cooler pattern evolving towards the end of the month. Until then, though, in the foreseeable future, no accumulating snow and no harsh cold for at least the next week or so. So we have some things to look forward to, it looks like, during the second half of March. Thank you for watching Weather 4 Weather Geeks tonight. Hope you have a great rest of your Monday, and I'll see you right back here on Tuesday.